six, whether IMBC carried out the verification, tarring, and declaration of results in accordance with Article 138, 3C, and 138.10 of the Constitution. This issue arises from the printings in all the petitions as consolidated. Based on the said readings, the affidavits sworn in support thereof and the written and oral submissions by parties, two, two viewpoints regarding the meaning, scope, and application of Article 138, 3C, and 10 of the Constitution have been advanced. On the one hand, the petitioners submit that pursuant to the foregoing provisions, the rule of verifying and tallying of votes as received from polling stations countrywide is vested in the Commission as a corporate entity and not the chairperson of the Commission. It is their argument that the chairperson cannot undertake this task to the exclusion of other Commissioners. They submit that the language of Article 138.3c does not envisage a situation where the chairperson can arrogate to himself and fettered authority to verify and tally the results at the National Tiring Centre without involving the other commissioners. Such action, they contend, would not only be unconstitutional, but would be sufficient ground without more to nullify an election of a president erect. In support of their argument, the petitioner cites the Court of Appeal decision in IMBC versus Mainakiai and five others as affirmed by this court in the case of Raira 2017. The petitioners further submit that Regulation 87.3 of the election general regulations is unconstitutional to the extent that it purports to vest the power of verification and tallying in the chairperson of IMBC. On the other hand, the first, second, and third respondents submit that power to verify, tally, and declare results of a presidential election at the National Tallying Center is the exclusive preserve of the chairperson of IMBC. According to them, there is nothing unconstitutional about Regulation 87.3 of the Elections General Regulations. The same regulation the respondent submits makes no mention of commissioners other than the chairperson. At any rate, the respondents argue Article 138.3c of the Constitution does not envisage a situation where it is the commissioners who personally undertake the task of verifying and tallying the results as entered into the thousands of Forms 34a. Such an undertaking would be humanly impossible, they submit, for good measure the respondents submit that Section 11A uh, of the IMBC Act provides that the chairperson and members of the Commission are responsible for the formulation of policy and strategy of the Commission and oversight. In their view, the Act does not contemplate a situation where commissioners would be directly involved in the verification and tabulation of presidential election results. The task of verification and tallying, as stated by the respondents, is executed by the staff of the commission under the direction and supervision of the commission secretary, who in turn reports to the chairperson. As to whether the chairperson acted unilaterally in verifying and tallying the presidential election results at the National Tallying Center, the petitioners claim that he did. This is what happened. It is the petitioners' case that the chairperson published an illegal gazette notice number 4956 of 2022 
in which he designated himself as a presidential returning officer, a position unknown in law and the constitution. Having done so, the petitioner states that the chairperson proceeded to conduct the verification and tallying process to the exclusion of other commissioners, each of whom he had assigned peripheral roles and related to the verification and tallying exercise. On his part, the chairperson of IBC submitted that although he has the exclusive authority to verify and tally the presidential election results as received at the National Tallying Center, he did involve the other commissioners in the exercise before eventually declaring the final results. He submitted that he did this in the spirit of teamwork. The chairperson of IBC states that indeed the four commissioners were involved in the preparation of the nine August general elections from the time of their swearing into office all the way to the verification and tallying of results at the National Tallying Center until they withdrew from the exercise just when he was set to declare the final results. Having considered all the parties' submissions, we find that pursuant to Article 138.3c of the Constitution, the power to verify and tally presidential election results as received at the National Tallying Center vests not in the chairperson of IBC, but in the commission itself. The latter carries out this exercise through its secretariat staff, technical personnel, and any other persons hired for that purpose under the oversight and supervision of the chairperson and the other members of the commission. In line with this court's decision in Raira Morondinga versus another, but, and another versus INBC and two others, as reported in 2017 Kenya Law Report, uh, popularly known as Raira 2017, and the Court of Appeal decision in uh, INBC versus Minor KI, we also find that the chairperson cannot arrogate to himself the power to verify and tally the results of a presidential election to the exclusion of other members of the commission. He did that Kwan that 8.10 of the constitution, although the power to declare the results of a presidential election after verification and tallying is vested in the chairperson, he does so only as a delegate of the commission. Consequently, to the extent that Regulation 87.3 of the Elections General Regulation purport to vest the power of verifying and tallying presidential election results as received at the National Tallying Center solely on the chairperson to the exclusion of other members of the commission, the same is contrary to and inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution. That said, we however take cognizance of the fact that the 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th respondents are referred to as the four commissioners actively participated in the verification and tallying exercise from the beginning up to the and until just before the declaration of the results uh, by the chairperson. They took turns announcing the results as verified and tallied and were present and active during the actual verification and tallying at BOMAS. An example is when one of them, Justice Nyangaya, stood on the podium to announce to the public results and also announced an adjustment that had been occasioned by errors of tabulation. The events of 15th August 2022, therefore, came as a surprise. As the public waited for the chairperson of IBC to declare the final results, sporadic violence broke out at BOMAS. The violence swiftly contained, was contained by the security forces, but there was unexpected drama 
as two different factions of the commission began to emerge. Kenyans found themselves watching an appalling split screen scenario on their television sets. On one part of the screen was the chairperson reading himself to declare the results in accordance with Article 1 that's 810 of the Constitution. On the other part of the screen were the four commissioners on the ruins of the Serena Hotel Nairobi from where they announced that they would not own the results that were soon to be declared by their chairperson. The four commissioners informed the public of their rejection of the yet to be announced results, terming them opaque due to the manner in which the chairperson had been conducting the verification and tearing exercise. In his affidavit dated 25th August 2022, Justice Nyangaya averred that the chairperson's actions during the tearing and verification exercise at BOMAS made it difficult to ascertain the total number of votes cast and the actual number of votes attained by each candidate so as to enable him authoritatively state the commission and declared accurate results. All the petitioners have anchored their arguments for the nullification of the 9th August presidential election in Taharia on the walkout from the bombers by the four commissioners. They contend that by rejecting IBC's results on grounds of opaqueness of the verification and tallying process, they called into question the credibility of the entire election. They further submitted that being in the majority out of the seven member commission, their view should prevail and the election should be nullified. It is the petitioner's argument, therefore, that a dysfunctional commission cannot deliver a credible election. We note that apart from their 11th hour denunciation of the verification and tallying process and their averments regarding the conduct of the chairperson, the four commissioners have not placed before this court any information or documents showing that the elections were either compromised or that the result would have substantially differed from that declared by the chairperson. Critically, they have not explained why they participated in a verification process when they knew that it was opaque up until the last minute. Indeed, at the Serena Hotel press briefing, the four commissioners acknowledged that thus far the entire election had been managed efficiently and credibly. The chairperson on his part did not make matters any better by maintaining a stoic silence, even as things appeared to be falling apart. All this, in our view, points to a serious malaise in the governance of an institution entrusted with one of the monumental tasks of midwifing our democracy, an institution that obviously needs far-reaching reforms, of which we shall say more in our detailed reasons. But are we to nullify an election on the basis of a last minute boardroom rapture, the details of which remain scanty and contradictory between the chairperson of the commission and some of its members? In the absence of any evidence of violation of the constitution and our electoral laws, how can we upset an election in which the people are participating without hindrance as they made their political choices pursuant to Article 38 of the Constitution? To do this would be tantamount to subjecting the sovereign will of the Kenyan people to the quorum and ticks of IBC. This we cannot do. Clearly, the current dysfunctionality at the Commission impugns the state of its corporate governance but does not affect the conduct 
of the 2022 election. In view of the foregoing, we are satisfied that notwithstanding the divisions apparent between the chairperson and the four commissioners, IMBC carried out the verification, tarring, and declaration of results in accordance with Article 138, 3C, and 10 of the Constitution. Issue number seven, whether the declared president-elect